Now, cross-cutting relations between joints. How they intersect can give us information on their relative ages. It won't tell us this one is 5 million years old and that one is 2 million years old, but it can tell us which one is older than the other. Good example, the J joints. In this case, the little short ones that are at an angle are always, always younger than the long through going cracks. We know that because those joints that are at an angle curve to end up perpendicular to those long joints. If those long joints were there, there would be no reason, there would be no cause for those angled joints to curve at their ends. They also don't go past those long joints. They stop at them. There'd be no way for all of those to happen to line, you know, if you could imagine those angled ones forming first, then the question is, okay, why do the ends all curve exactly like that? And then why do the ends all stop just right to allow these later fractures, or later joints to come through? And why did they happen to go through in just the right spots? Not logical whatsoever. This tells us those through going joints came first, then the angled joints formed, and the ends of them curved until they reached the large master joints, at which point they stopped. The stress was relieved. That curvature at the end is called hooking. The sigmoidal joints, um, I don't have the slide right here, but the sigmoidal joints, same idea. Those through-going master joints were older, and then the younger angled joints formed. In this case, though, they hooked to go parallel to the master joints instead of hooking to go perpendicular to them. Now, joint spacing. If you ever look at a big um, road cut, big outcrop, big cliff of sedimentary rock, within a given bed there are little vertical joints and they end up being pretty evenly spaced, which almost seems implausible. I mean, how could something in nature end up so evenly spaced. You know, how could those joints in Devil's Tower and Giant's Causeway end up so evenly spaced? You know, those hexagons are all approximately the same size. Why is that? Also, if we have a thin sedimentary bed, the joint spacing is tighter together. If we have a thick bed, they're further apart. Why? What is, you know, did somebody go in there with a hammer and chisel and do this to trick us? No. There's a very basic reason called a stress shadow. The stress shadow is the zone around a joint where the tensile, uh, oops, that's a typo. Let me fix that. tensile stress has decreased. So through time we get a nice sedimentary layer at top at time one hasn't fractured yet. Time two a little while later after it's been buried we start getting our first fracture our first joint. Time three and four more and more joints are forming time five and six until we reach present day they're not precisely spaced but that's pretty darn consistent stress shadows are the cause anywhere that the rock starts to break it relieves some of that tension 
some of that tensile stress is relieved. I mean, it's like if you're pulling on a piece of paper, you're feeling that tension. You're applying tension. If the paper rips in half, those two halves of the paper are no longer under tension. It relieved that stress. So the joint, the crack, relieves the stress around it. That's the stress shadow. Now, if it doesn't go all the way through, plus the fact that this is happening in a buried layer, so there's interaction with the layer above and below, you know, there's friction, so even if you get a through-going joint that goes all the way through the whole bed, nearby there's still going to be stress because of the frictional interaction with a bed above and a bed below. However, right around that crack, the stress is relieved. It's happy. It's relieved. If that stress-free zone is touching another stress-free zone because of another nearby crack, there's no stressed rock between them. So no more cracks are going to form. That's kind of like this middle picture here and the right hand picture here. So on the left, even though there are little stress-free zones around each of those cracks, there's a lot of rock that's still white, it's still stressed, it's not in a shadow, it's not in a stress shadow. So more cracks are going to form. On the other hand here, this is the top of the bed, this is the bottom of the bed, it's a thin bed. The stress shadows are only so wide based on the type of rock and that thickness of the bed. If the bed were thicker, like here on the right, the stress shadows get to be longer or taller, which, because they're curved, makes them wider. That's why a thicker bed has a bigger spacing. As soon as those stress shadows are touching, we get no more cracks between these, and so that's our joint spacing. If they happened to start a little bit closer together before they cracked all the way through, that's how we can have slightly reduced crack space or joint spacing. Or if they were a, a bit further apart and the shadows did not touch, then you could get a new joint forming in that space between the two joint shadows and ha that's how you can get the smallest possible joint spacing. But this is, you know, this is perfectly spaced. This is approximately what happens. On a small atomic scale, imagining each of these little grids being a molecule of whatever mineral happens to be in this part of the rock, and there's tension pulling left and right on this little grid of mineral. In the center, two of the minerals crack apart. They're no longer holding to each other. That relieves some of the stress right around it. As that crack grows vertically, that stress shadow gets bigger. More and more of that stress is relieved. However, until the crack goes all the way through, oops, now all of that stress is concentrated right up here at the top and right down here at the bottom where it hasn't cracked yet. That pretty much, you know, same amount of tension that started the crack still existing. It's not going to take long for that crack to finish going through, at which point the stress is relieved. This shows you different kinds of rocks with the same bed thickness getting different joint spacing because of the material. Something like dolomite ends up with a tighter 
joint spacing, a smaller joint spacing than sandstone. Why is this? Do they get different size joint shadows? Yes, they do. And the elastic moduli, which the stiffness of a rock, is going to determine it. The difference shown is due to Young's modulus, the elastic moduli. A smaller elastic moduli, i.e. a stiffer rock, results in smaller spacing because you have a smaller stress shadow. If the rock is not very flexible, that stress shadow, the area where it relieved the stress, is going to be pretty tight around the fracture. A rock with more elasticity, with a larger Young's modulus, like sandstone, relative to the dolomite, is going to have a bigger stress shadow. That release of stress is going to cover a larger area around the crack, so you end up with larger spacing, even with an equal bed thickness.